Hi, I'm John F. Allen. And I'm R.J. Sullivan. And we're the Two Towers. But I will say, uh, as far as the um, characters in this film, um, we'll go through Bloodsport was in prison, played by Idris Elba, because he had been hired, presumably by Lex Luthor, to kill Superman. And he put him into uh, a coma by shooting him with a kryptonite bullet. Uh, he almost killed Superman. So, yeah, this guy is in prison for that. He has a daughter who is, um, you know, basically, uh, you know, getting into trouble. You know, seeing she didn't have uh, very good role models in her parents, obviously, with regards to everything that's going on. Um, and Amanda Waller wants blood sport for this team, but he's not having any of it. So she uses uh, his daughter as a, an incentive uh, with threat of incarcerating her in a maximum penitentiary uh, to get him to join the Task Force X, aka Suicide Squad, the Suicide Squad. So um, his character was interesting, and I really hope that they that they put him in future projects. I would love to see Idris Elba reprise his role as Bloodsport. Uh, King Shark was fun. Yeah, you know, it's a talking, walking shark that says stuff that you can't make heads or tails of. And <laughs> you know that is Sylvester Stallone who's providing yeah. the voice. So that makes it even funnier. And he, you know... He did. He did excellent in the in the role. I liked King Shark as a character. It was just funny, over the top comic relief. Uh, they played him as being the oafish, you know, uh, mm -hmm. mentally challenged uh, scion of a an actual shark guy. Because his right. father was like this huge god that was worshipped and had all this power and stuff, and then. You know, he has this one fuck up dumb son that, you know, <laughs> that plods his way through life and, and, and ends up on this team. So that was interesting uh, choice for this team. Uh, yeah. Rat Catcher um, 2, which she was uh, took over for her, her father, who's Rat Catcher 1. Um, okay, so that character... I like the actress's portrayal of the character, but the character in and of themselves was okay. I mean, you know, if she talks to rats, she makes them do all kinds of stuff. And this is from a guy who wrote a short story called Hood Rats. Uh, <laughs> this um, was interesting, but it wasn't, she wasn't as much of a standout character as I thought she could have been just for my own personal taste, but it would be interesting to see her in some subsequent DC features, especially now that they have HBO Max, maybe having her show up in the Peacemaker series, uh, you know, a cameo there or somewhere else along, along the lines. Not necessary, but it would be kind of interesting to see what, you know, comes of her after this. Um, and I'm saving the best for last year. Peacemaker. So, as I had said earlier, Peacemaker as a character was someone that I was uh, familiar with from the comics. And he is someone who's like a patriotic mercenary who will do anything for peace, even become unpeaceful or murderous. And so this myopic focus on something that is supposed to be a revered uh, uh, goal for people and, you know, whatnot is turned on its head. It's, and it's, it's portrayed very well by John Cena. It's almost like 
if Captain America were a douchebag who couldn't think past, go out and fight for freedom, regardless of the cost. Right. And that's how he is portrayed. And it is great. And he's he's skillful. And it's it's just, you know, they they really nailed it. I don't think they could have gotten any other actor to play this particular role to the at the level that John Cena played it. And like I'm saying, I'm I'm saying this with no disrespect. John Cena is not the gifted thespian. But for this role, he delivered exactly what I thought he should, exactly what I wanted him to deliver, and he delivered it well, so much so that I'm really looking forward to the Peacemaker uh, television series. All right. Wow. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, so, King Shark, I don't know if you have checked out the Harley Quinn animated show on HBO Max, but King Shark has a big part in that. So I actually approached this character with some expectations of, and, and back history, at least as far as, as far as that goes. Um, he actually has an arc in this movie that I thought between, between him and Ratcatcher, I thought they worked really well together and I really enjoyed, it was absurd, but I thought it, it was an enjoyable storyline that actually worked out in its own really bizarre way. Um, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, Idris Elba and the scene with his daughter. Uh, again, I about fell off the couch again. Uh, just, just a great way to set that up. And oh, what do I want to say about, about John Cena and, and that? Um, well, there's a plot twist late in the movie. I don't think I want to... I don't think I want to reveal that, but I will say I was on his side and it actually gets into some kind of modern politics and actually it reminded me a bit of the Watchmen, if you remember how that ended. And it's a question of, do we reveal what's really going on or do we hide it for the sake of, of uh, you know, putting out a certain presentation to the general, uh, to, to uh, the American people? And I thought Peacemaker was on the right side of that based on how I personally feel. Uh, I'll leave it at that. You can, you can, uh, when you watch the movie, you can ponder that or, or ignore it. Uh, but I, um, so I thought the way everything resolved was very interesting. It was very complicated and it, it did have a depth to it that I, would not have expected from this movie. This movie really is kind of a throwaway film until it's not. The, there were things that were coming at you. You know, the more I talk about it, the more I'm kind of reminded of some of the details. There were things that came at you um, that that did, they, they were a little bit deeper. And uh, so I have to revise my, some of my initial comments. There, there are some things that, that are to think about and probably when I rewatch it, though, and I will rewatch this soon. <laughs> um, there there was there was some more there than uh than i expected as as it starts off um let's talk about amanda waller a little bit more and the three people who were her underlings um i am i took them also at face value john um they they uh, again we're kind of getting in the spoilers but they kind of got got the they got the upper hand on her at one point, and I did find that a little bit odd, and I found it odd that there were not more repercussions following that, and I'm wondering if you had a similar vibe. That was exactly the problem that I had with the character, and that's why this didn't get five towers, because okay. she lost her damn mind and decided to be, well, first she was I get that she was, you know, doing her duty to protect and I, uh, uh, to protect the interests of the United States and all that. I fall on the opposite side of you with regards to that. I was all about Rick Flag, uh, you know, putting, putting things on full blast, let me put it that way. 
because okay. in my mind that was uber dirty and somebody needed to do something because they were out of control and uh it needed to be brought to light even if it wasn't public it needed to be brought to light to a point where um there were some uh interdepartmental changes in operations about how things went let me put it to you that way okay Not you know what i um let me interrupt you right here um i think i misspoke i I think if I understand you correctly, I am on your side. I probably got the characters flip-flopped in my head. So, um, yes, I I believe that you and I are on the same side on this, and I probably misspoke earlier. So I'm just going to – I'll leave it at that. Go on. <laughs> okay. So uh, my, thing, my thing about it is, is that uh, when it comes to Amanda Waller's portrayal with this, um, you know, she wasn't as – consistent in her resolve as she had been in her previous iterations uh, in Suicide Squad and in other DC um, offerings. And that, that bothered me because for one, she lost her cool about the whole thing where uh, the one character, uh, Savant, was concerned and you know, Amanda Waller doesn't lose her cool. And if she did lose her cool, it wouldn't be because of that. And it wouldn't be to the extent that she did. That was so out of character for her. But then, like you said, on the flip side of that, at the end, when, you know, her underlings, you know, went and uh, did what they did, there would have been if this is Amanda Waller that I've grown to know and love, there would have been some repercussions other than, oh, well, we're sticking you with a shitty detail now, nanny, nanny, boo-boo. Right. I expected them to come back and there'd be three completely different people in the role. That's totally what I expected to have. That. Right. No I, comment on somebody, what happened. <laughs> right. Somebody was either going to come up missing or they were, uh, and, and never be returned. Um, you know, or they were going to end up somewhere where no one would ever see them again, even though they may still be amongst the living. Those were my thoughts on that. Um, although I will say this, of the three, only two are shown active. One, we correct. don't know what happened. <laughs> you so are maybe, correct. Maybe that's, you know, it's left up to the, uh, um, to the interpretation of the viewer. I guess, but those were, I mean, it wasn't like it took me completely out of the movie and made it unenjoyable for me, but at the same time, it was something that I noticed and I could not help but not react to it. So I have to uh, be true to, to who I am and what I felt about it. So that, that, that was that. And that was my biggest issue besides the, um, uh, two characters who will not return and the potential that they had. Um, I just cannot, um, I couldn't just like say, oh, well, it's no big deal. I'm going to give it five. I had to be true to how I felt. So it was why. enough. It was confusing enough. I noticed it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, one other thing that I will say that I thought was kind of cool in one way um was rat catchers uh rat subordinate sebastian i thought yes. he was a little 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 character um and although <laughs> i love the fact that james gunn decided to use weasel of all of the characters he could have used in this film weasel an anthropomorphic weasel. And the idea of the designs for the character were based upon Bill the Cat from Bloom County comic strip. I guess. And oh I my, could... oh <laughs> my God. That in and of itself was hilarious. That was so... totally off the chain for me. I didn't know what to make of that. That was... <laughs> That was hysterical. I had again. I had no context. Oh, I want to say something. It hasn't been said. 
regardless of our opinion of Suicide Squad, you can watch this movie having not watched the first one. Or if you didn't like the first one, you can still watch this one. There's really not much connection or reason to watch both if you have a strong opinion about that. This movie is completely standalone. And, you know, um, as, as you know, that said, it does. Ha- it's a large ensemble film. And, and as I demonstrated earlier, I probably got a character or two a little confused as I was trying to sort through it all. But you don't need one to enjoy the other. So, yeah. So. I had a good time with this film, um, you know, and just to recap. Basically, Amanda Waller uh, recruits these people from Bell Reef. Um, they are uh, criminals, hardened supervillains, and she plants a bomb in there and sends them on this mission. She sends one. She has two groups. They, they form two groups. Uh, one team takes one side of the island. The other team takes the other. One is meant as a decoy. The other is meant for the real mission. Um, this is a uh, country, an island nation that is uh, under uh, dictatorship uh, due to the previous installment of uh, ruling uh, family were murdered and a bunch of chaos. And then there was revolutionaries who wanted to take uh, back the nation of Porto Maltese. And you've got these folks in the midst of the, 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 the Suicide Squad team uh, mixed into this, where they're trying to retrieve some information, some data uh, there and, you know, make the government, the United States government, look its best, all shiny, spiffy, and innocent. Mm-hmm. That being said, um, that's the gist of this film chaos ensues of course um i can't say enough about this film to say that it is really funny um you know it is really entertaining uh there was one character who who's uh didn't make it to the end of the film that uh, that i forgot to mention that based upon the comic book interpretation of her should have that was mon gal who was mon gold's daughter uh mon gold is somebody who can go toe to toe with superman who's actually stronger than superman one would one would imagine his daughter would have been able to you know um make it through this film as there weren't any um you know super uh alien forces from apocalypse or something that might have been something that could have derailed her or uh you know she was underpowered in this as a character and i thought that that was a disservice to the character they could have definitely used another character in her place that would have made more sense so that's another little quibble it's not that big deal um you know for me but it's just an observation um, mm-hmm. you know, and, um, other than that, I really had a good time with this film. I would recommend it. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to be for everybody, but it, it worked for me for what it was. Yeah. If, if, if you have any sense that this might be your thing, I suspect it is. I mean, you know, it's from the, the tone of Deadpool and other things like it. If you enjoyed that, you're definitely going to enjoy this. It is not as much like Guardians of the Galaxy as I would have expected. I mean, you know, James Gunn has a track record. Um, it, I mean, it has some similarities, but this is very much its own thing. And as I said earlier, he knew what he wanted to do. He did it. I don't sense a whole lot of studio interference in this vision. It feels very much like they just cut him loose and let him do what he wanted. And I think it, uh, I think it worked out very well for everybody involved. Um, I don't think anybody should take the box office reports very seriously because I think we're living in weird times. And I think this would be a huge hit uh, in, 
in the theaters if not for um covid and and the world we live in uh this certainly i think will be considered a a win for warner brothers and for dc and it should be and uh you know um it's it's not like like john said it's not for everyone but it's it's i think it's definitely for enough people that it's it's going to uh be the springboard for lots of interesting projects in the future so that's kind of where i land with it john well looks like we land on the same spot there uh again <laughs> i do want to say that i am uh definitely looking forward to uh the peacemaker series i can't wait to see how this is going to play out uh, you know uh, it's going to be very interesting uh, I will say this much, uh, Sean Gunn was the body uh, motion capture for Weasel, who is uh, James yeah. Gunn's brother, who, and he was also the uh, screen, the motion capture for Rocket Raccoon in the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and the Avengers film, so there's that. Uh, Nathan Fillion uh, plays the detachable kid, TDK, um, Meta human who can detach his arms from his body. A very stupid ability to have. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and yet. But, and yet, and yet it is appropriate for this film. So let's just put that there. Uh, Nathan Fillion uh, is a uh, very uh, behind the scenes type of uh, guy when it comes to some of these uh, films. Uh, he plays characters that you don't really recognize him uh, for himself. Uh, he was the alien in the uh, penitentiary um, where uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy first came together. And, uh, you know, it, it's just interesting how they put this film together, the characters that they use and the actors they use to portray the characters. Uh, you had... Um, Alice Braga as the Sol Soria. She's the leader of the uh, rebel faction for the uh, Porto uh, Maltese. Uh, and then you had Pete Davidson as Blackguard, who was a uh, mercenary. And the fact that it's Pete Davidson, because if you've watched SNL, you know that that kid is just about as goofy as they come. And, you know, uh, Michael Rooker was even in this film as Savant, who's the hand-to-hand com uh, combat and weapons expert. Um, just interesting to see um, him in a blonde wig. That was, in and of itself, um, enjoyable and disturbing at the same time. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, that's what I've got. That's 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 where I'm at. All right. Yeah. So that's two big recommendations for the Suicide Squad, and uh, that's that's I think um, that's all. You, I think that's all you need to know. If you haven't seen it, you definitely need to. Uh, probably should have gone and seen it and then come back. But you know, I you do you. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, that being said. Um, if you want to know all the things that are going on with me outside of the two towers as I am an author and uh, you can check me out at John F. Allen author.com and you can go to my website there and you can get the lowdown on everything John F. Allen related and you can also subscribe to my newsletter. Uh, where can they find you, RJ? I'm at rjsullivanfiction.com. <clears throat> uh, I also have a newsletter. I am uh, uh, preparing several things. I've got a couple sequels in the works for my both my fantasy and sci-fi, and I'm looking to really push things out at a uh, at a social media level. Try and get some some uh things going on most of which are still coming together so i can't say too much but i think there's going to be some fun stuff coming down the line in the near future so that's where they can find me 
All right. And you can visit our website at the two towers talk show.com and check us out there. And please be sure to subscribe to our channel so you can get every episode as they are aired. And you can comment on our episodes. We'd love to hear from you. What did you think about the Suicide Squad? Did you like it more than you did the original Suicide Squad film? Um, did you have some of the same quibbles as I did with the film? Did you hate it? We want to hear from you. And be sure to give this episode a thumbs up so that we can track how you guys like what we're doing because what we're doing we're doing for you and if you are a nerd of a certain age be sure to check out og nerds it's a facebook online community for nerds of a certain age although all 18 and over are welcome we cater to the old school 40 and over crowd uh so check us out there and um until next time stay nerdy The Two Towers Talk Show is sponsored in part by OG Nerds, a new social media community dedicated to nerds of a certain age, 40 and over, although all are welcome. Members are encouraged to share articles and links on their favorite nerdy topics such as animation, anime, art, books, writing, comics, manga, movies, music, sports, tech, science, TV, video games, RPGs, and more. Be sure to visit them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The Two Towers Talk Show is sponsored in part by Showtime Cinema in Mooresville, Indiana. Their friendly staff is always willing to go the extra mile to make your movie-going experience an enjoyable and memorable one. Enjoy the comfort of their new cushioned seating in their spacious auditoriums. And while you're there, be sure to stop by the concession stand and purchase some popcorn where real butter topping is an option. They're located at 300 South Bridge Street in Mooresville, Indiana. We hope to see you at the movies.